Good day. This week we are looking at how to get through trials. And we saw on day one, one of the keys to getting through a trial is to be of good cheer. And we saw yesterday, one of the ways to get through a trial is to be of good cheer. Today, I want to talk about how to get through a trial. And my point number three is be of good cheer. The Bible says here in John 16, 33, Jesus speaking, he says, These things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So the way that I can get through trials is to take courage and begin to rejoice that God is the one who's going to get me through. You know, many times when people are going through a trial or a tribulation, they think it's personal. They think that there is a specific target on their back of the enemy. And I want to just let you know, man, we live in a fallen world and, and oftentimes you are not just the perfect target for the enemy. You may be sometimes, but not all of the time. He is not omnipresent. The enemy is, is one person and he's in Ukraine and uh, Afghanistan messing stuff up. He's not personally attacking you. You just live in a fallen world. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says no temptation. That's talking the word temptation. There's talking about a trial. It's talking about tribulation. It's talking about being tested. It says no temptation, regardless of its source, has overtaken or enticed you that is not common to human experience, nor is any temptation unusual or beyond human resistance, but God is faithful to his word. He's compassionate and trustworthy, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability to resist. But along with the temptation, he has in the past and is now and will always provide the way out as well so that you will be able to endure it without yielding and will overcome temptation with joy. So he's saying, yeah, man, whatever you're going through, it's not personal. It's common. It's normal to every human being on the planet. The difference between you and the unbeliever is that you've got a God who is faithful and trustworthy, who is always with you and is going to give you the way of escape. So that's the five points I want to leave you with this morning. Whatever trial you're going through, it's not unusual. Secondly, it's not beyond resisting. The, the Bible says if you've got the Spirit of God within you, you can resist, you can get through it. Thirdly, you've got to know that God is faithful and not the source of your trial. Number four, he's the one who is going to give you a way of escape. And number five, you can resist and overcome with joy. So remember, the theme is how do I get through trials? I get through trials by rejoicing, by considering it all joy. And he says that we overcome with joy. In 1 Peter chapter 1, from verse 6 onwards, it says, In this you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. <laughs> he has the same theme. Peter's writing and he's saying, man, we can rejoice even though we are going through trials. And then he talk, talks about that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, Though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So he's saying the genuineness of your faith. What are you going to believe in the midst of a trial? Do you believe that the overcomer lives inside of you? Do you believe that the greater one lives inside of you and that you're going to get through this because God is faithful and trustworthy? You remember the woman with the issue of blood? You know, the Bible says here in Luke 8, 43, and the woman who had suffered from a hemorrhage for 12 years and had spent all her money on physicians and could not be healed by anyone, came up behind him and touched the fringe of his outer robe and immediately her bleeding stopped. And then Jesus says in verse 48, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. This woman, when the Bible says all seemed lost, man, it, for her, it was like, there's nothing left. She spent all of her money. There was nothing left. All things seemed lost. Listen, when you are in a trial or a circumstance, when all things seem lost, when it seems like, man, this is the end, we're never going to get through. Jesus says, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. 
Your faith has saved you. Your faith has sozoed you, made you well, preserved you, healed you, delivered you from your trial. You know, one of the ways that we can get through trials is by being of good cheer. In Philippians 2.14, it says, Do all things without grumbling and complaining and fault-finding against God and questioning and doubting among yourselves. Many times we're going through trials, we're questioning God, we're doubting, we're complaining and we're grumbling instead of rejoicing. In Psalm 35, 27, let them shout and be glad, rejoice, sing, be cheerful, who favor my righteous cause. And let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, who takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. I want to encourage you, if you're going through a trial, man, just know that what you believe is going to be tested. And make sure you are believing the right thing, that God is the one who is for you. You can rejoice in the midst of it and you're going to get through because what you believe about God will save you. Make sure you are believing the right thing about God, that he is good and he's always good and that he gives you the way of escape. Always remember, you are highly favored and deeply loved of God.